Here we have simplify or solving a rational equation that simplifies to a quadratic. Binomial denominators, constant numerators. So we do have to identify the lowest common denominator here. And since both of these expressions are different from one another, we have to include both in our common denominator. Now, um, we're going to take the first fraction and multiply it by w plus 1 w minus 1, you could think of it as over 1 if it helps you visually, equals to negative 6 times w plus 1 w minus 1 minus 1 over w minus 1 times w plus 1 and w minus 1. And so then we cancel what we can or reduce so we can reduce those factors and we can reduce those factors. What we're left with is negative 6 times w minus 1, negative 6 times w plus 1, and w minus 1, and then negative 1 times w plus 1. And so I'm going to go ahead and distribute my coefficients. So I have negative 6w positive 6. Over here, be careful. When you have three things multiplied, you have to multiply two of them. Here I get negative 1w, negative 1. So then now I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two binomials. So I get negative 6w squared, negative 6w, I get negative 6w, and positive 6. Oh wait, this one should be positive 6w and then negative 6w and positive 6. So then if I combine my like terms on the left hand side, I get these two will cancel and I get negative 6w. Now, I would like to use the quadratic formula just because I think it's, um, honestly, I think it requires a little bit less brain power than trying to factor trinomials that have a coefficient greater than one. So as soon as I see that there's a number in front of the w squared, my brain automatically goes to the quadratic formula. Now if that number was not there, then I probably would have moved these two terms over and tried to factor it because I can factor trinomials pretty easily. Um, but at this level, sometimes the trinomials cannot be factored. And if you use the quadratic formula, you don't have to worry about whether you're wasting time trying to factor something that isn't factorable. So quadratic formula will just play itself out, which is why I recommend from now on when you have a, um, a quadratic equation, just to use the quadratic formula. Don't try to factor it unless the directions specifically say to factor it. So for this term, I want it to be positive, so I'm going to move it over to this side. And so then that means I have to move over everybody. So this one's going to become positive 1w, a negative 5w. These two terms were already there. And so all three moved over there. I have nothing left over on this side. Now that means now I have 6w squared and all of these terms to combine. So I get negative 10w and then plus 6. And so if I use my quadratic formula, I get w equals, let's see, a will be 6, b will be negative 10, and c will be positive 6. So negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this will turn into a positive 10 plus or minus the square root of minus 4 times 10 times 6, negative 140, oh, I'm sorry, this should be 6 times 6. I typed that in the calculator wrong. I get still negative I get negative 44.
So you really have to be careful if um, the directions will allow complex numbers as your solutions or not. Okay, I wasn't expecting to get a negative in here which would result in a complex number. So I'm looking back up here and when I moved this over, for some reason I put a W on it and it was not a variable term. This five moved over should have been a constant negative five. And then these terms would have been the same. So when I combined my like terms, I should have only been combining these two W's, leaving me with minus five W, and then combining these two constants, leaving me with a positive one constant, which means my B and my C are incorrect. So B should have been negative five, and C should have been positive one. So I'm gonna come into this formula and plug in the correct numbers. So b squared minus 4a and then c. So when I plug this into the calculator, here negative, uh, negative 5 is going to be a positive 5. And then I'm going to have negative 5 squared minus 4 times 6 times 1. I just get 1. And then 2 times 6 is 12. So I get 5 and the square root of 1 is just 1. So I get two answers. I get 5 plus 1 over 12 and 5 minus 1 over 12. 5 plus 1 over 12 is 6 over 12 and 5 minus 1 over 12 is 4 over 12. Both of these can reduce so I get 1 half and then I get 1 third. Now I do have to verify that these are in fact solutions. And all I have to do is make sure that they are um, not going to cause my denominators to equal zero. So when I plug in one half here and I add one, I don't get zero. When I plug in one half here and I minus one, I don't get zero. So one half is a good answer. It will be a solution. When I try to check one third, one third plus one will not be zero and one third minus one will not be zero. So one third is also a solution. So in this particular problem, we have two solutions, one half and one third. Now let's try another one. These are very lengthy problems and the longer that a problem is, the more chances there are of making an error. So, and you saw me make an error in this one, okay? I caught it because I noticed that there was a negative here and I wasn't expecting there to be a negative, which caused me to go back and review what I had done. Um, but that's just from my experience. So as a student, you definitely want to make sure you don't rush and that you check and double check and even triple check each step as you go along. Okay. So for this problem, we do have to identify the LCD again. And these two denominators are distinct. They are not the same, so we have to include both in the LCD. And so then I'm going to, instead of writing the whole problem out because I don't have as much space as I did with the last problem, I'm just going to write it here and here. nothing cancels on this term and here the w plus ones cancel so what am i left with i'm left with one times w plus three equal to negative six times both of these factors plus six times w plus one and then i go on to distribute so one w plus three negative six w minus six which still has to be multiplied by the w plus three plus 6w plus 6. So then we'll go ahead and multiply this out. We get negative 6w squared, negative 18w, negative 6w, and negative 18. Now we do need to move all these terms over to the left side because this term is negative, which means the squared is going to be over here, which means everything needs to be over there. So I'm going to take the positive 
Then I'm going to take the positive 18w, positive 6w, positive 18, negative 6w, negative 6. And these two terms were already on this side. So they do not change signs because they're just being rewritten on the exact same side that we're already on. Now I'm going to combine my like terms. So I have 6w squared, and then I have all of these that need to be combined. Those will actually cancel, so I get 19w. Then I'm going to take my constants and combine those. I get um, positive 15 and equal to 0. So now we use our quadratic formula. So W will equal negative B, B is positive 19, plus or minus positive 19 squared, minus 4, times positive 6 for A, times positive 15 for C, all over 2 times positive 6 for A. If you want, you can always say A equals 6, B equals 19, and C equals 15 if you need to write this out before you do the formula. I've been doing it all along, but it's not necessary if you can keep track on what goes where. So let's see what we get here. We get negative 19 plus or minus and then 19 squared minus 4 times 6 times 15. I get 1 again, coincidentally, and 12. So we get negative 19, and the square root of 1 is 1 over 12. There's no more square roots, so I can combine these terms. So I'm going to split the plus or minus. And then this fraction will be negative 18 over 12. This fraction will be negative 20 over 12. And both of those reduce. So here I get negative 3 over 2. And here I get negative 5 over 3. And so neither one of these denominators, neither one of these numbers is going to make this denominator 0 or this denominator 0. So both of these will be our solutions.